An accuser steps out and says that she was awed by Chris Brown in a brand new documentary based on the singer that's about to come out tonight. This is very interesting, and it has something to do with Diddy? What's up? Chris Brown has officially been sucked into Diddy's orbit in a new documentary that's about to drop tonight on the ID channel. This is very, very interesting. In fact, we've heard about this particular victim. This victim accused Chris Brown of actually putting his hands on her and of aring her on a yacht, Diddy's yacht, allegedly. And it's very, very interesting. And she's coming back to double down, triple down, maybe quadruple down on the allegations she has against Chris Brown in this brand new documentary that's coming out tonight on ID. And we got to talk about this. This is very interesting because she lost her lawyers back then because he had some information, some text messages, some voicemails that came out that basically, I guess, by the public, in the public eye, exonerated him. But now those lawyers, those same lawyers that dropped her are now re-representing her and saying that she is a victim and he really did are her. We got to take a look at this. This is some crazy stuff. Like I said, this is something that happened about two years ago. At least the allegations came out two years ago. And of course, like I said, it, 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 it became an absolute mess. We got to take a look at this for sure. So it says here, woman who previously accused Chris Brown of plying her with substances and, of course, then aring her in a $20 million lawsuit is resurfacing her allegations in a new ID documentary. Now, I did a video about this literally a couple weeks ago when they when we all caught wind, when the news caught wind about this new docu-series or documentary that's coming out called Chris Brown, A History of Violence that's supposed to be coming out in December. And she claims that Chris Brown attacked her on a yacht outside of Sean Diddy Combs mansion. I guess it was a yacht party that she was attacked at. And it's that's some pretty wild stuff. But let's take a look at this. She does not accuse Combs, though, who recently ch was charged with a bunch of different things, which we already know. And of course, he's been looking at some serious stuff and taking part of some serious crimes during that time as well. However, in a preview for the documentary, seen by page six, and of course, the, the trailer's out there. You guys can go see it. And in fact, I watched it on my uh, in, in a previous video, so I'll make sure the link is down below. You guys can go and take a look at it there, too. She recalls seeing the seeing Ditter, Diddy uh, on the yacht at one point, but she describes him as really nice. But that is not what we're hearing about Diddy anymore right now. Of course, this is the silhouette of this Jane Doe right here. Again, it's this is just a screenshot from the actual from the actual documentary that's coming out allegedly tonight. So her attorney. Ariel Mitchell Kid, which, by the way, we all know about Ariel Mitchell Kid. She is she is uh, representing a bunch of other, a bunch of, uh, of other clients, other victims of Diddy, and she's been out here quite a bit on News Nation and a bunch of other places, doing all kinds of interviews, just dropping serious stuff. She is the one who actually is the one who said that there is a household name bigger than Diddy that is depicted or seen in these freak off tapes. Pretty damning stuff, to say the least. So, again, she was recently representing a Diddy accuser, but then since dropped that client due to a break breakdown in the attorney-client relationship. She affirms to page six, the article we're reading here, that Diddy was indeed on the yacht. Now, I want to make this abundantly clear because she was and she is representing a bunch of different clients, a bunch of different Diddy accusers. So one of these clients that she had, one of the Diddy accusers, they, I, I guess they parted ways, but she is still representing other Diddy accusers, just so you know. If I'm correct, she was representing Adria, uh, one of the women that was there. She, she was a former adult film star. She was at the parties and she was basically made to go and have relations with, with people in other rooms and all that just so you guys know. But let's continue. Ariel Mitchell Kidd also says this, continuing on. The yacht was docked behind the, his house on Star Island. We now believe he may have owned the yacht or chartered it. 
We have not been able to confirm that. That's why we did not specify the type of ownership. And I'm wondering if he owns it, does it matter? Does it change things a diff- in a way? I- I'm kind of curious about that. And maybe one of you guys, lawyers, or one of you law nerds can can clarify that in the chat down below. But moving on. When Doe first filed her lawsuit in January of 2022, an insider told Page Six at that time that although the large boat was docked outside of Tacoma's property, he did not own the yacht. So a separate source close to Combs tells Page Six, these allegations have nothing to do with Diddy at all and have not alleged any wrongdoing against him. So he is completely in the clear, but this whole thing did go down, allegedly, at a party that Diddy was apparently throwing. Allegedly throwing. But moving on. Meanwhile, Doe maintains, Jane Doe maintains in the documentary that she has been honest about her claims against Brown, stating that she wanted to come forward again to shed light on what really happened. She recalls meeting the the under-the-influence singer, Chris Brown, on the boat, and he was handing her alcohol. She says, I don't remember if I saw him pour it, but I just drank it, and he just hands me another drink. As I'm standing there, I start to feel kind of tired, and my body was feeling a little heavy. The accuser alleges that Brown then took her into a bedroom on the boat, where he allegedly proceeded to sprawl out on the bed and then get on top of her, quote-unquote. She says, I couldn't move. I, I said no, and then I felt him. Next thing I know, next thing I knew, he was inside me, she claims in amid tears. I didn't want to do it, and he's kissing me from stopping me from talking. I was so disgusted. The Doe also alleges that in the doc that she continued, continued to speak to the loyal singer to Chris Brown, after the incident to get more quote-unquote clarity on the matter, but later realized the depth of what had allegedly happened to her through therapy. Interesting. So then, when this suit was first filed, Brown, of course, stepped forward. He denied any wrongdoing, then leaked text messages that he received from Doe, that, that Doe sent him in attempt to clear his name. So let's take a look at this. So he says, before we go into that part, allegedly a text uh, Brown, Chris Brown shared from his alleged accuser at that time, and it was time stamped at August 26, 2021, stated, and it's I guess he's him saying this, you knew farewell, you knew full well, I was impressing you about no D. You told me to stay, and then you're going to try to play me? Nah, that's crazy. I didn't deserve that, but you definitely got it. Then he also shared a voice message in which a woman's voice says, I want to see you again. I just want to see you again. Just let me know. If you want me to leave you alone, I will, but I really just want to F the ish again. He also added a, a separate in a separate post on his Instagram Instagram stories. He said, "No more dragging me through the mud." We can see right here, "No more dragging me through the mud." Clearly, you can you can see the the cap, but still, clearly you can all see the cap. Now let's see if the media will keep that same energy they had trying to destroy me to run and to run the real story. Me and my team are taking legal action on this situation. You don't play with people's lives like that. Thanks, Team Breezy. Very interesting, right? So, of course, this is all information. And, you know, he's sitting there. She's sitting there going, I want to see you again. Uh, All that stuff. Now, that could be that could be a, a, a slew of different things. Maybe she didn't know what really went down. Maybe she's denying it, but still wants to get back with him. Or maybe she's just trying to get with him so she can get more clarity and more clarification for herself. It could be a slew of different things. But of course, out here, I can see why some might look at that and side eye the information. It's side eye, uh, you know, it's side eye worthy for sure. Absolutely. But he shared that stuff and he said, look, I'm, I'm innocent. But then 
And also after that, when that stuff did come out, Ariel Mitchell and uh, uh, another lawyer who were representing her at the time then dropped her as a client. But now she's representing her again, just so you know. Ariel Mitchell Kidd is re-representing her right now as we speak. But she dropped her at that time. And she was, she says to page six in March of 2022 that the Miami Beach Police Department had provided them with new information that quote-unquote precluded or precluded them from representing her. However, Ariel Mitchell Kidd decided to take on Doe as a client again, explaining to page six, as we all know, time heals all, but I never had a problem with my client. My client was definitely aid, and I believe her. Now, in August 2022, Doe's initial suit was dismissed without pre prejudice due to lack of representation. It's unclear if Mitchell plans to refile the lawsuit on behalf of Doe. And of course, this documentary that's supposed to be coming out premieres tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is also very, very interesting to say the least. So again, it's very interesting. The, 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 the case or this lawsuit was dismissed because she didn't have anybody representing her which is very, very interesting. Now that she has Ariel Mitchell Kidd again, obviously it's going to be a different story, and obviously there's going to be a lawsuit for sure. Unless Chris Brown is able to show some more proof of his innocence, more smoking gun evidence, that'll be something. But what say you guys? I think it is interesting that after this uh, this thing, this tragedy that she, alleged, she alleges happened with Chris Brown, she still was trying to get in touch with him in some sort of way. Some may look at it as, oh, she's just a fan or she was trying to find an excuse to get back with him. Maybe this lawsuit was filed because of jealousy, because he didn't want to get back with her again or something of that sort. You never know. Or maybe she was trying to get with him again so that she can get more understanding, as she states in this article. But regardless, I am kind of curious what you guys think. Let's get the conversation going on down below. So comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think this person is telling the truth? Do you think she's after a bag? Do you think she's just a disgruntled lover and wants some sort of strange revenge? Or do you think what happened to her really happened to her? Then the other thing, too, is the lawyers stopped representing her. They dropped her, and now they're picking her back up. Is it because of the wave of the diddler or is it for something else comment down below let me know what your thoughts are hit that like button down below don't forget to crush that subscribe button hit that follow button if you're watching on other platforms and we'll be talking very soon be good to yourselves be good to one another see you guys soon this is the pascal show bye p-a-s-c-a-l you are now rocking with that dude pascal we be going wild